It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, promised us that we would invade India. If I live to see it, I will sacrifice myself and my wealth. If I am killed, I will be one of the best of the martyrs. And if I come back, I will be Abu Huraira, the freed. Muhammad Qasem has seen many dreams regarding World War III and Ghazwa e Hind, or conquest of India, which have been proven true, as per the hadith mentioned by Abu Huraira, albeit weak, and another hadith we will mention later on. As per both the hadiths and Muhammad Qasim, the conquest of India will be a pivotal stage in World War III. It will mark the first ever battle won by the Muslims, after having suffered so much defeat and humiliation. One could even compare it to the Battle of Badr, and this comparison doesn't stem from empty words. Muhammad Qasem narrates, I have seen Ghazwa e Hind and World War III many times in my dreams. On March 2017, I saw Turkey falling down and destruction was everywhere. Immediately after this happened, Israel became very active. It increased their operation around Palestine and it also built a fort for Dajjal. Welcome back. The Temple Mount is the site of the first and second Jewish temples. But for hundreds of years, it's been occupied by Muslim shrines. The Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Golden Dome of the Rock now sit on the site. But some Jewish people want to build a third Jewish temple. CBN correspondent Julie Stahl spoke with expert Liz Healy about that vision and its challenges. Shalom and welcome to today's virtual Israel tour. Over the last two weeks, we've been talking about some of the amazing outcomes of the 1967 Six-Day War. Today, we want to show you a prophetic shift that occurred when the Temple Mount came back into Jewish hands, opening the door to the building of the Third Jewish Temple. Some called it a kiss from heaven. And Muslims couldn't do anything either other than protest. Then Israel formed alliances with other countries and started to spread unrest. The United States was among their supporters and helped Israel by offering their intelligence. When Russia found out about this, it immediately formed alliances with countries nearby. And Russia also became active and raced against the United States in conquering lands in the Middle East. It was as if they were all aiming to conquer the entire world. Then the United States openly jumped in the Middle East and they met with Israel and their other allies and together they started attacking the axis of Russia and its allies. And this provocation caused Russia and its allies to fight back and their armies were deployed to repel the Western Front in the Middle East. And thus World War III had begun and the battlefields were countries of the Middle East, a region which many had hoped would soon come to find peace. The worst destruction took place in the Middle East, and huge amount of Muslims were massacred. The war became so violent and terrifying that neither were the Muslims able to fight back, nor did anyone dare to come to their help. You want to tell them? What? No? What? what? You, want to, you want only to take a picture? Yeah, I want to take that as you. You want, you want to take the picture, and I want to take the picture. Yeah. They are kids. You like when the soldier come and take picture to your kids? The bloodshed slowly spread throughout countries such as Egypt, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, 
the UAE, and almost every part of the Middle East. The team of Israel were constantly gaining more and more allies, and even some Muslim countries also became allies with either the USA or Russia. Both superpowers wanted to conquer most of the lands, and whichever territory they attained, they held on to it firmly, and they continued fighting one another while massacring the Muslims. In the meantime, in the Indian subcontinent, Pakistan grew stronger and started to advance economically, militarily, and all other fields. The level of advancement that Pakistan will enjoy will be far beyond our imagination, so much so that the sight of flights will become regular, buildings will be suspended in the sky, food will be automated, the living standard will be the best in the world, and the inhabitants of the country would be highly sophisticated. But then India, an ally with Israel and jealous of Pakistan's sudden growth, started attacking Pakistan. Even the United States, Israel, and many other Middle Eastern countries would help India against Pakistan. They all intended to destroy Pakistan completely. Thus, Pakistan had a very vast amount of enemies, but Allah protected Pakistan with around 3,000 highly advanced black fighter jets. These black fighter jets will be extremely advanced and will surpass any aircraft or anti-air machines that gets in their ways the likes of which the entire world have never seen before. Then the war against Pakistan began. With the help of Allah, Pakistan came out victorious against its enemies. Pakistan then conquered all of India, fulfilling the promise of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as well as Bangladesh and Afghanistan. And once Pakistan claimed victory over the Indian subcontinent, Indonesia and Malaysia also became allies of Pakistan. And thus the Islamic alliance was forged, a front that caused fear to the major powers. And their fears were rightly placed. As the modernized Islamic army of Pakistan jumped in the Middle East by the will of Allah and they clashed with both superpowers using the powerful black fighter jets until they emerged victorious. Pakistan attacked its enemies in such a way that no one could stop them. After defeating both superpowers, Pakistan became the sole superpower and secluded themselves from the world. The whole world was governed by the pure Islamic laws and legislations. And when Pakistan gained control of the Middle Eastern and Arab nations, the world's greatest caliphate was established, surpassing any caliphate that came before. All of these areas became a part of the last caliphate, and the Middle East was rebuilt after the devastating casualties it endured. And peace was finally established in this blessed land and in the entire world. Then the true Islam of the last Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was establishing in the entire world, and peace finally prevailed where once the greatest war of mankind took place. And the dream ends there. This single dream alone from Muhammad Qasim is in line with numerous hadiths regarding the events near end times and the great war that the Imam Mahdi will lead. Firstly, going back to our introduction, this dream is in line with the previously mentioned hadith of Abu Huraira. However, we did say that it was a weak hadith, didn't we? And there are even some scholars who might claim that the event of the conquest of India has already occurred. This is a false claim, as there is another credible hadith that proves that the conquest of India will occur near the end times. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him, said, There are two groups of my Ummah whom Allah will free from the hellfire, the group that invades India and the group that will be with Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him. By merging these two hadiths together, we can affirm the following two points. Firstly, the conquest of India is a legitimate event that will indeed occur, as per the credibility of the second hadith, 
which is of Hassan grade. Secondly, the conquest of India will be near the end times, and therefore has not yet occurred, unlike some may lead you to believe. Thus, the dream of Muhammad Qasim regarding the conquest of India is a true dream supported by reliable hadiths. In the very same dream, Muhammad Qasim narrates to us that Russia and its allies, alongside with the United States and their allies, which are ultimately NATO and even some Middle Eastern and Arab countries, will all unite together to fight Pakistan. This is in line with the following hadith. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Count six signs that indicate the approach of the hour. My death, the conquest of Jerusalem, a plague that will afflict you as the plague that afflicts sheep, the increase of wealth to such an extent that even if one is given 100 dinars, he will not be satisfied. Then an affliction which no Arab house will escape. And then a truce between you and the Byzantines, who will betray you and attack you under 80 flags. Under each flag will be 12,000 soldiers. And thus, by comparing the world's coalition against Pakistan as per Muhammad Qasim's dream with the hadith regarding the 80 banner coalition against Muslims near the end of times, we can conclude that Qasim's dream is in accordance with the hadith and the sign of judgment day that our beloved prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, warned us of. Muhammad Qasim's dream also foresees the Third World War. In biblical scriptures, this great affliction is referred as Armageddon. For obvious reasons, this dream from Qasem is in accordance with the hadiths regarding the Great War, or the Great Malhama in Arabic. However, in case you still had doubts whether World War III will occur, well then, here is a reliable hadith from Al-Albani mentioning the Great War. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, On the day of the great battle, the camp of the Muslims is in a land called al Ghotah, in which there is a city called Damascus, which will be the best of the homes for the Muslims on that day. And so again, Muhammad Qasem's dream regarding the occurrence of World War III is in line with the reliable hadith from al-Albani, mentioning the Great War, proving that his dreams are in accordance to the events near the end of times, as narrated in the hadiths. The great battle of Badr and the great blessed 313 warriors of Allah marked the first ever victory of the Muslims against their enemies. Their enemies, the pagans, had severely persecuted the Muslims at the time, and under the leadership of Abu Jahl and the leaders of Quraysh at the time, they had provoked the Muslims into this battle. The Muslim army was few in numbers, facing a much larger opponent. It was a battle between truth and falsehood. Had the companions of Badr lost, then Islam itself would have perished. And thus, a seemingly impossible and hopeless situation became a great victory for the Muslims. And after this victory in Badr, the true Islam of Allah and His Messenger began to rise in the Arabian Peninsula. This great battle, which had many remarkable Islamic personalities, such as Abu Bakr, Hamza, Omar, Ali, and many others, 
may Allah be pleased with them, was led by none other than Muhammad himself, peace and blessings be upon him. And Allah exempted the participants of Badr from the punishment of the hellfire. Did we not mention earlier that the battle for India will be similar to the battle of Badr? From where do we base this? Well, here is the compelling evidence. The great battle of India, like Badr, will mark the first ever victory of the Muslims against their enemies in World War III after having suffered so much loss and humiliation. Their enemies, the radical Hindutvas of India, are severely persecuting the Muslims at this very moment, and under the leadership of Modi and the leaders of India, the Muslims are gradually being provoked into battle. The Muslim army of Pakistan, which we proved is the army of the Black Banners, will be in few numbers in contrast to the army India, similar to the Battle of Badr. And like Badr, it will be a battle between truth and falsehood, a battle between Islam and polytheism once again. If the Muslims were to lose in India, then like Badr, Islam would perish. And furthermore, the true Islam would emerge in the whole world after the victory in India, just like the Battle of Badr. And even the Hadith we previously mentioned proves that the participants of the conquest of India will be free from the hellfire, exactly as the companions of Badr were exempted from the hellfire. And last but not least, a statement which will cause severe controversy, and some of you may not believe it. However, just as the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, participated in Badr, he will also participate in the Battle of India. This is why the battle or conquest of India is quasi-identical to the battle of Badr. And what great blessing is that? To be compared with the great participants of Badr and to be exempted from the hellfire. Not only that, but to be also led by none other than the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. What greater privilege could there possibly be in this world? All Muslims should prepare themselves for what's to come and we should strive for to have a role in rebuilding the Muslim world, which has lost sight of its light and main source of guidance, which is Islam. And this is why Muhammad Qasem is the Imam Mahdi, as all of his dreams so far are matching exactly with the hadiths regarding end times, word by word. There is not a single dream of his so far that conflicts with a single hadith, and if he is a liar, how is it possible for a man who has been sharing his made-up dreams on the internet for so long, not even conflict with his own dreams, let alone the hadiths? Mark my words, Muhammad Qasim is the Imam Mahdi, and we have given you more than sufficient evidence to back this claim. I urge you to think about it clearly and read the hadiths and compare it to the dreams of Muhammad Qasim before you make any decision. In the end, it is Allah who can help us, and we ask Allah to give us clarity and guide us on the straight path.